Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to install Cocos 2DX version 4 on Xcode so you can develop for iOS. If you want to know how to develop for Android or do the setup on Windows and Linux, I'll have separate videos so feel free to check them out. Also got a separate video on how to set up on Mac for Mac development because it is slightly different. So feel free to check that out if you, you know are interested in that. And you can actually combine all of these as well. And I might actually do that. I might do a video where I'll just combine it all together. Okay, so first of all, you need to make sure you've got Xcode and you can get that if you search for App Store. It's a free download. And search for Xcode. So you'll have an install button, click install. I think it's about eight or so gigabyte so it takes a little bit of time so just wait for that to download once that's downloaded I recommend that you open up Xcode you'll go through the process of just you know launching your first launch will take a little bit of time you'll download and install components once that's successfully launched you can close it down if you want to after that but it's just the initial you know stage that can take a bit of time so definitely you know run that and because some of those components in the back end you know are required sometimes that you may not have them and it can cause errors so yeah just something to note if you've already got xcode and you've been using it then you probably won't have this problem next what we need to do is go and get a web browser and download two things first of all go to cocos.com go to product and Cocos 2DX download when it appears. So right there, click download. Download the latest version, which is version 4 at the time of doing this video. But we can download a newer one, that is fine. Click download, it'll start downloading it any second now. I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it. Next, what we need to do is also get CMake, which is going to allow us to configure our projects. And so we're going to use homebrew for that you can get that from brew.sh i'll provide a link to everything that you need so if you just copy this piece of code copy that and now search for terminal paste what you just copied press enter press return to continue to download and install homebrew for me it's not going to take very long at all because i've already got it installed and it should already be up to date for yourself if this is the first time you're doing it then it's going to take a bit of time so just wait patiently and once it's done you can move to the next stage which we're going to use homebrew to install cmake and there we go okay so like I say, it can take a bit of time but again if you are wanting to create multiple export i mean cocos projects you only have to do a lot of the steps once basically the long steps you'll only have to do them once which is good next what we need to do is install cmake so do put brew space install space cmake and just click enter again i've already got it installed it's up to date so it's great if not you will install it if it asks you to confirm anything just confirm it and once it's all done we're all ready to start setting up Cocos. So we will actually need the terminal. So I'm just gonna clear this, just optional, so makes it a little cleaner. And what I'm gonna do is go to this folder in application called development. I've created this. This is where I put that Cocos download. I recommend putting in a, you know, some location that you're happy with because your projects, every time you create a new one, will refer to this folder. So you don't wanna be moving this around. Now we need to extract this .zip file by double clicking it. Shouldn't take that long, probably take less than 10 seconds to extract it. And it's almost done. Okay, that's all done now. Now I'm gonna rename this folder to just cocos2d-x. Reason I'm doing that is again, just an optional step in case we update this later on so we don't have an incorrect version number there. Now we need to run the setup.py file to do that. Type in cd, which is chain directory, drag that on, press enter, and now we can run the setup.py file. And I'm going to zoom in a bit on here. That should be a bit better. So if I put dot forward slash setup.py, click enter, 
We can ignore the NDK root, or set up the Cocos root itself, which is fine. Ignore the Android SDK root again, that's for Android stuff, which we we'll are doing a separate video. Now I need to run this command right here. It will be different for you depending on what your username is. So right click, copy that, paste it. This is really quick and that's done. If you type Cocos now, if you get something like this and no error, that means Cocos is now successfully configured. So what I'm gonna do is navigate, I can actually close this down now. Navigate to my desktop by putting CD space, drag a file over and just do that. Now I'm on the desktop. This is where I'm gonna create my Cocos project. You can create it wherever you want. Once you created the project, you can move it around as well. To create a Cocos project, you put Cocos, space new, space, then the name of your project. So I'm gonna say Cocos game, space, dash L, which no semicolon, space, and now you put your language. So CPP for C++, JS for JavaScript, for example. So CPP, and an optional parameter is dash P, which is for package, and you can always change this afterwards, but I think it's always good if you know your package to put it from the start. So systems dot game, for example, click enter and it will start creating our project there this little process doesn't take long that's all done now open this up in older versions of cocos if you had gone to the project you know dot ios mac we would have essentially got a xcode solution file here we don't have that we need to actually use cmake this is what we need cmake for to produce those project files. And you can actually produce them for other platforms other than Xcode. Feel free to check out the Cocos website for all the other platforms that are supported, but I recommend Xcode. And so what we wanna do is CD to the iOS directory. So CD and go to iOS. And now you wanna run a command which is pretty long. So I've got it right here. I will put this in the description. The reason I'm not typing it manually is pretty easy to make a mistake with a command like this. So I'm gonna copy that. Again, I am going to put this in the description. So feel free to copy and paste it from there. So you wanna you know, paste this here, click enter. So this seems to be going all well. This seems to be working fine. If you get any compilation errors about cannot find CPP compiler or you know something along those lines, what you want to do again, this is only if you get some error here, is run this command sudo xcode dash select space dash dash reset. And this will essentially just reset Xcode. It won't delete anything. Just if you've got a new, this usually happens if you've got a new install of Xcode and click enter. You're asking for your password. You can type it in. It doesn't actually show you any, you know, even any password chars like asterisks or anything. Click enter. I'm not gonna run this command simply for one reason. It turns off my recording software, but just type your password in, your username password, click enter. Okay, my recording software is shut off then, so yeah, I've just turned it back on. So, uh, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, if you run this command, which I accidentally just did. So if you run that command, that will fix any errors, and then you can basically run this command again. That's only if you had errors in this one though. Now, once you've done that, and you've got all these files, you wanna launch this up, so double click that. And now, what you wanna do is select this, Go to your name of your project, which will have like a, a little icon like this. So you can select a device if you want to. Feel free to set that up, you know, the way you normally would. I'm going to select a simulator. Click play. This is just going to compile like about, you know, 500 odd files. Most of these files, I only compiled the first time. So unless you do a rebuild, like a full clean, you will only compile the files that you have changed. So while that compiles, let me show you what you need to be interested in with here. You can ignore that, ignore that, and even ignore that unless you really wanna change stuff in the C make file, for example, you probably won't want to. So we can close that down. And the main things that we need to do deal with is the Cocos game file. So source files, we've got classes. So all the classes we need to deal with, 
main ones is the scenes and you would create more scenes for you know your settings for your main menu for your game scene for example resources this is where your images will go There's some default images and your fonts etc which are going to be used in the example application which is launched a really simple application and as you can see here we got some example code so feel free to you know mess around with that so yeah we're just waiting for this to compile it is almost done now once it is done i will obviously show you it launched and then i will close the simulator down i will make a little modification in this file launch it again show you that it is a lot quicker if you are just making changes and you're running it frequently instead of doing you know a rebuild every single time so yeah just waiting now almost there almost at the 500 mark we're at 475 now we've gone past there we're at 500 now 510 520 531 you'll do three more files usually that you'll compile after this point Oh, five source file this time. Okay, link in and the build should hopefully succeed. Build succeeded. Unable to boot device due to insufficient resources. Okay, so uh, let me close this down. okay you probably won't have that issue i'll just have a lot of stuff open if you do just shut some stuff down or reboot your computer and there you go it's gonna launch that's just the splash screen we'll get to it any moment now there we go that's it we have now launched it the other thing to note is if this is the first time that you've installed xcode and the first time you're running an ios simulator it can take a bit of time to launch up you'll probably have a black screen just wait patiently for the first time i did it it took a little while to you know it's just doing some setup process in the back end so again just feel be patient what i would recommend is just leave the simulator open so that way you you don't have to constantly open it again and again so i'm going to make this change i'm going to put xyz here and run that as you can see it doesn't go through all of those files and just compiles my files and there you go build has succeeded simulator launch and it shows the new hello world xyz so that is it so that is how you set up cocos 2dx version 4 on mac using xcode for ios if you have any questions you get any errors covered quite a bit of them anyway but if you do feel free to pop me a message you know on youtube on discord wherever and i'll help you out or somebody in the community will and that's it i look forward to seeing you in the next video